Somniac Spinets on 518 here, and today we are doing a shorthand video install for the uh, Glow Shift Air Fuel Ratio uh, Wideband Air Fuel Ratio gauge. Now, I do have a 2012 Mazda Speed 3, and if you want to see the full install video for how I did all the wiring and all the running through the firewall and that kind of stuff, specifically for a Mazda Speed 3, I'll have a link down below in the description for you. You can go check that one out. Uh, it is a long one. But this is just kind of generic steps um, for installing a wideband glow shift uh, air fuel ratio gauge into whatever car you wanted to install it into. So I'm kind of showing you what comes in the box-ish and then, uh, I don't know, kind of going from there. So I will say that this gauge gave me the most amount of heartache um, when I was installing it and I learned a lot when figuring out exactly where uh, I can connect the gauge and how to, you know, weld. Uh, this is the first time I ever did welding, so that's pretty cool. Definitely do not go into this install on your car um, having no idea what you're doing. Definitely do a little bit of research, do a little bit of Googling, make sure that you have all of the parts and pieces that you need because uh, you will not be able to just connect to your factory um, oxygen sensors. We are back, and this is what I have for us today. So that narrow band gauge is not gonna work. Um, apparently you need to have a narrow band O2 sensor to go with a narrow band gauge. So I bought a wide band gauge and I found out that you can't really hook your current gauge into your current sensor because your car is using the sensor you can't just splice into it like I thought I could. So I went back to Glow Shift and I said, hey, I bought a thing, it doesn't work for me. And they said, no problem, you can return it for like half price, which sucks, but whatever. Um, and then I bought this. So it comes with a whole bunch of cables. So this is your wiring harness that's gonna plug into your power control module um, and then plug into your O2 sensor, okay? I have a new O2 sensor to go with that. I have the, whoa, still keeping with the tinted, uh, seven color series, right? But I have a wide band air fuel ratio gauge, which is great. Um, and then I have these two more cables that come with it. So in, or three more, sorry. Obviously you got the gauge. Okay, makes sense, it's cool. Uh, and if you look at the back of the gauge, you got two plugs going on here. You have a three prong and you've got a five prong. Um, I'll tell you what those are for here in a little bit. And then you open the box a little bit further. Naturally, you got your, your thingamajig right here, right? Which slips slippity doos over to, oh my God, cat. Also inside of this, uh, we have, of course, your little screw bracket ports that go into the back of the gauge. Um, you have your standard warranty thing, your instructions for how to install it, but then you also have an O2 sensor bung for your stock exhaust. So basically, this is, I think, a three quarter hole uh, is the outer diameter of this inner hole right here. So I'm gonna drop my exhaust, drill a hole right around the upstream oxygen sensor and add this new one in there. And then of course it comes with just a little threaded insert that if you really wanted to plug it, you could throw that on there. Uh, but included, right, we have this power control module, which basically um, you have your four inputs right here. We got four wires, we've got the gauge, sensing wire which is going to plug into this six prong right here we have analog output which is going to be this one right here that lets you uh, hook into this for tuning purposes but i have a cob access port this is more for show you have the supply going to the gauge right here which is the five wire and then you have your power input right here which is a four wire ah uh, so that means that i get to rewire our uh, orange, which is the headlights, our black, which is the ground, the red, which I think was the continuous, and the yellow, which is the keyed power source. But I'm gonna hook those into the existing ones that I already have once I remove the old gauge. Um, so that shouldn't be too bad. 
and then I'm also going to move my gauges around. These are the two cables running one from the gauge and one from the power supply cluster of all the things that I have in there going to my uh, power control module or the narrow band or the wide band gauge. Um, and then I have laying in the passenger seat over there or on the floor the cable that runs out to the new O2 sensor whenever I get that installed into the exhaust. What I did in fact get in the mail though was this guy. So this is our O2 sensor socket adapter and so that slit right there is meant for the O2 sensor wires and then it's a 7 16th or something I think. I don't remember. The next step is we get to drill holes in here. Um, so I need to install my O2 sensor uh, above the catalytic converter in order to get like an accurate reading, which means I need to install it somewhere in here. Um, it really should be on the top to keep moisture and that kind of stuff from um, getting all over it. Now we do have this O2 sensor that plugs in here. And if you look at it, I did put my intercooler back on for when I started it. But if you look at it, it sticks in a good half inch, inch, probably like three quarters of an inch. So I'll split the diff. Um, which means it's going in about that far, right? So I could drill a hole somewhere in here, right? Um, to put my new one, um, or I could drill it somewhere in here so that it's sitting in at like an angle. Um, I don't entirely know what I want to do yet, but I'm going to figure that out. Here we go. Hell yeah. <laughs> car is freaking out ABS and traction control I think just because of the angle that I'm sitting at but no engine codes something else real quick that I also notice um, as the O2 sensor is heating up right it takes a little while for the exhaust and all that sort of stuff to really get hot and micro so you'll see a lot of flickering in the needle or the air fuel gauge and that's totally normal once the exhaust gets hot and that sensor gets nice and toasty then it settles out very very nicely and you can see a very quick reaction uh, to the gauge itself whenever you rev i'm a little upset are a little sad that the air fuel ratio gauge uh, is a different color than the boost and the water temp. At least it's in the center, maybe. I don't know, because there's only three, so there's not much you can do about it. The white of the air fuel wideband is a little bit more of a blue than the white from the other two. So the boost and the water temp for sure match perfectly, but I don't know why the LED color for the air fuel is different than the other two, so that's a little annoying. Yeah, so it's a bit of a pain to get the air fuel ratio gauge installed just because you have to drop your exhaust, you have to drill a hole into it in order to add your uh, another a second upstream O2 sensor, and then you got to run all the wires and cables and that kind of stuff in order to make that work. Um, like I said, I didn't do any wiring in this video because it's pretty... Or, uh, this video is not intended for only the Mazda Speed owners. For those that own a Mazda Speed that want to go and install the glow shift gauges, definitely check out the full video that I have. It's about an hour long, uh, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. It's a lot of work and a lot of footage. Um, but yeah, so if you don't own a Mazda Speed, then none of that helps you at all. Um, and you have to figure out your wiring, unfortunately, on your own because glow shift is just going to be generic gauge hey this is for this thing and then you have to figure out exactly how to get it to connect um, inside of your car damn it why am i shivering anyways uh yeah i hope you guys have enjoyed if you have please drop a like and a subscribe any comments down below i'll do my best in order to answer them quickly and uh to the best of my abilities see you guys next time minutes sign out